Hello, this is Matt Slick from the Matt Slick Live podcast, where I defend the Christian faith and lay out our foundations of the truth of God's Word. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening and for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Friends, you're about to hear a remarkable story from a remarkable man of God who's a chaplain pastor in the Ukraine. He's in the United States right now, and he is right across from me. His name is Brother Alex, and the, you'll also hear the angelic voice of Anya, who's a wonderful interpreter. Uh, Alex, t- tell us about who you are and, and kind of where you grew up and how you met Jesus. I met Jesus in 1996. Jesus found me among the criminal world and among the drug addicted people. He liberated me and delivered from addiction of drugs. And he called me to follow him. Я вдячний Богу за те, що він покликав мене сьогодні. Я є пастор церкви. I'm very grateful to Jesus Christ that he called me once and now I'm a senior pastor of Christian Church in Ukraine. Я можу свідчити людям про те, як Господь змінив моє життя, змінив все навколо мене. And now I can testify how God changed my life and how he's using me for his glory now. What a testimony now. You also, were you involved in like military beforehand? It's a war now in Ukraine. We are fighting against the Russian army. And yes, I'm a military chaplain. I'm serving soldiers. But also we have a huge humanitarian warehouse where we are helping IDP people, internal displaced people from the front line, uh, occupied territories and where everything is destroyed. And so before you came to Christ, before you, uh, were you also involved in the military and fighting and guns and everything? До зброї був залучений, але не до військових. Тому що кримінал, яким я займався, він мав таку необхідність, щоб мати зброю у себе. Uh, unfortunately, I was connected to the weapon, but in a good way, because I used to be a criminal person, and I tried to kill people and all that stuff, so I quit the weapon at all in my life. I wasn't a military or anything, but once the war started, I decided that I will fight for my Ukraine and I will have a weapon for a good reason. So, many people left Ukraine to go to safety, but you went to the danger. You stayed, Alex. Why? Особисто я не вірив, що війна почнеться так, як ми її бачимо сьогодні. Personally, I don't believe that the war is beginning as we see the war. Але 24 лютого під час я проснувся вранці і почув, що росіяни, вони почали повномасштабну війну. It was a lot of gossiping in 2022 that the war will start, and we didn't believe that. But on 24th of February, when the first rocket came to Ukraine, I understood that I will fight for my country. When God called me, I to and uh, when I just began to be a Christian, I quit all weapon and I throw away all weapon to the river. It was illegal. But the, when the war started, uh, God talked to me again. But on 24 I Повинен знову звернутися до зброї, але вже не як людина криміналу, а як людина, яка зможе допомагати в своїй країні. 
and I decided that I will buy a weapon just for fighting for my country and I will sign for volunteer military army unit so I will have a possibility to be on the front line. Now, if you just joined us, this is Truth Talk. We're not, we're not speaking in tongues. We have a special guest from the Ukraine <clears throat> named Alex and he's speaking in Ukrainian and then this Anya, this, this, this uh, angelic voice of Anya who has also been serving Christ over in Ukraine is, is back here in the States now working and getting the message out. They're with us. It's loud because we just finished Wednesday in the Word. Spurly, what just happened in here, man? Amazing place. <laughs> Unbelievable. This was a day of huge, huge. Never forget godly. Uh, this whole Ukraine story is just amazing place today. It was we awesome. don't normally do testimonies at, at Wednesday in the Word, but we had a, our special good friend, uh, uh, Mark Smith, with an amazing ministry, Lantern Rescue, uh, is hosting these dear folks and he said, the men have to hear this, even if it's a few minutes. And so Alex just blessed us, didn't he? There wasn't a, a quiet, dry eye in the room. And Anya interpreted. And the men, we really got around. We prayed for him. And if you just join us, you, you if you didn't hear a second ago, be sure you get this podcast later on and listen in, you know, on demand. He shared about how he came to Christ out of drugs and heroin and narcotics and, and dealing and, and some violence and gangs and all that. And he came to Christ. He dumped all of his weapons in the river. <clears throat> got saved, became a pastor, a chaplain, leading people to Jesus. And then the bombs from Russia start dropping on his homeland. And instead of running, he stayed. And he took up arms again, this time to defend his country and to be a chaplain. And who knows how many people he's led to Christ. It's estimated over 60,000. God's used him and other ministries to join with him to bring to safety and to, to healing. And so he's telling us kind of the state right now. Our listeners want to know the truth about what's happening there and how they can pray for you, Brother Alex. Насправді те, що ми чуємо, що Україна є терорист, це не пусті слова, а це ті дії, які вони роблять в нашій країні. Вони вбивають дітей, вони вбивають людей похилого віку, вони не рахуються життями, вони просто знищують нашу країну. Uh, we may say that Russia is a terrorist state. It's not a common war. They are just trying to hit the civilian spots as hospitals and hotels and the places where refugees live in, schools. They are not counting any lives, children, women, old people. It doesn't matter for them. They are hiding their military people in civilian places on the front line in the village and they know that Ukrainian army will never hit the civilian. So they are using the houses of people, real civilian people, not military guys, not soldiers, for they are covering and for they are hiding. Their methods and standards of the war is a terroristic one. It's not a war, it's a genocide of Ukrainian nation. Wow. What is God doing among his church there? I mean, I'm hearing sounds of revival, that people are trusting Jesus. We're hearing about prayer meetings. We're hearing about people on their knees in a bomb shelter and the Lord is working. Can you tell us a little bit about God, what God is doing there right now. Насправді треба дуже багато молитися сьогодні за український народ, тому що у нас є таке прислів'я: як тривога, то до Бога. Люди звертаються у молитві до Бога, але до кінця вони навіть не уявляють, як їм треба що на по-справжньому треба навернутися, а не просто просити у Бога про допомогу. Uh, there is a phrase in Ukrainian that God, uh, people are going to God only in suffering. And unfortunately, we may say that now people, yes, they are standing on their knees when it's like something dangerous happening, some heating or uh, some dangerous stuff. But the uh, next day, they are forgetting about God again. They are not receiving God honestly. They are not born from the heavens. So we need your prayers and mm. prayer support Amen. to like make disciples, real disciples of Jesus, not just the nation who is asking God for helping in the suffering, but not receiving Jesus Christ in their lives. Wow. How can our listeners pray for you? Specifically, you're going back to the war, you know, you're going back to the shells and the bullets, the hand grenades, the bombs, the drone strikes. You're, you're fighting a battle, you're leading people to Christ, you're fighting a spiritual and physical battle. Uh, how, how can our listeners pray for you, Alex? 
По-перше, я хочу сказати, подякувати, що ви молитесь за Україну і надаєте ту допомогу, яку ми маємо від Америки. First of all, I want to say thank you for all the prayers which you prayed for all this year of the war, because I know that you are praying and we feel your support very much. So thank you to all, every American, every person who is this country is praying for us. Молиться, знаєте, те, що ми самі і молимося, щоб Бог діяв через нас надприродньо, щоб Бог давав відкриття людям, коли ми несемо Євангеліє, щоб це не, вони не сприймали нас як слова людей, а сприймали як голос Бога. And I would ask you to pray about my anointing so God can use me like an instrument for his work. So when people will listen to my words, they will not receive that as the words of person, of my name, but they will feel the God's presence and they will understand that God is talking to them and they will receive Jesus Christ in their hearts. So this man was just on a battlefield in a war-torn country. This morning he's with us in Bible study at Dario, Wednesday in the Word. That's why the noise, all these guys, there's guys over there praying, there's guys fellowship, and Jamal came over, he's on fire for God. <clears throat> Spurley's here, and uh, Herb is here, another author, God, man of God, Hoover, and God's just blessing and working, and we're grateful for the ministry of Lantern Rescue. You, you can go there to learn more about how you can support their relief efforts in, in the Ukraine, but pray for the Ukraine, laying aside all the politics, you know, everyone's in America, we like to get into all that, and sure, there's angles and all that, but we know that There are true, genuine, God-loving people who are being bombed. And we know that that nation needs Jesus. And we're praying that Ukraine will come to Christ. You know, even more people will come to Christ. There's a softening, I guess. The the, the war has softened hearts to the gospel, I guess. Hasn't it, uh, Alex? <clears throat> How has the war softened hearts to the gospel? I mean, it's a, it's a good, it's a harvest time, right? Amen? <laughs> Дякую, що ми могли бути сьогодні тут на цій зустрічі. Насправді дуже багато ту розділ, які ми розбирали, вони стосуються зараз України. Тому моліться за нас. Ми віримо в перемогу, яку нам дасть Господь, тому що своїми зусиллями, навіть за підтримкою влади Америки, яку зброю вони нам надають, цієї перемоги нам не бачити, якщо Господь не буде разом з нами. We are very thankful for this opportunity to be here on this Bible study because even today when we will discuss all suffering and challenges which Hebrews had, we have the same. Ukrainians asking why and we want to answer that question with God's words. But also we know that even when the American government is giving a lot of weapons and supporting us with money and all of that, if God will not support us, we will not have the victory. So we ask you to pray about the victory, spiritual victory for Ukraine. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll be praying for you. Uh, there's a great uh, ministry, Lantern Rescue, lanternrescue.com, and you can learn more about all God's doing there. We taught on Exodus chapter 5. The opening part, Pharaoh says, who is the Lord? In the very end, it's a crisis of faith for Moses, Aaron, and the children of Israel because they're being oppressed harder. And they're like, why, Lord? Why have you done this? And we talk about why questions. And a lot of people in Ukraine, in our world, are asking why. The only answer to a why question is a who question. In the presence of God, in his presence is fullness of joy. And that's what she was talking to, talking about. God bless Anya. God bless uh, you, uh, my dear friend Alex. And we're so grateful for you. I'm not sure the proper way to say thank you. Maybe uh, Jinkuye? Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. This is the Truth Network.